All right, y'all, we back here. This is going to be chapter four of the Book of Moses. All right, he meets Ruiel. I'm going to try to just get started. So this is a good ride. I, I think we'll get all the way through here uh, until he's on his way back to Egypt. Because this is about to cover seven years after he's... Um, he accidentally killed a guy uh, back in um, Egypt. It was a little different than the Bible story because he knew who he was. He was still raised by his parents in this story. And he was still, he was a Nazarene. <clears throat> so he was just upset after he had accidentally killed a guy that these guys were raping a woman and when he went to go stop them he accidentally killed the dude so um, the precepts of Zayin because he was a Nazarene so he's a Nazarene lion they're trained in this art of fight called Zayin and um, one of the precepts like the main precept is that you shall not kill you can um Disable, disarm, break legs, do whatever you gotta do. Um, but you cannot kill. So the fact that he had killed somebody, even though it was Pharaoh wasn't mad at him, they, everybody was like, "You're being too hard on yourself." His father was like, "You're being too hard on yourself." So but he went into the desert to go fast, and then he heard a voice tell him to go to Cush. When he gets there. And then he's like, he didn't know where to go, but he ended up in the same spot in the center of Cush where the original Garden of Eden was. And he slept, and now he he um, just started to climb the mountain right now, and that's where we're at. Okay, so Moses decided to explore the mountain for when he climbed the trail. He had seen footprints of people and sheep. He wondered, is someone living upon this mountain? As he explored, he found the answer. Yeah, he found one large ute surrounded by seven small yurts and an old man. The old man sat on a log in front of the large ute, smiling at Moses. He said to Moses, I've been waiting for you. Moses said, how could you be waiting for me? Even I didn't know I was coming. The old man said, last night I heard you snoring. <laughs> Only a deaf man would not know you were here. The old man laughed at his own joke, then said, The dove revealed your coming, and the lamb guided your coming. And I honor your coming, for behold, not many these days can hear the voice of the lamb. Moses had never seen a Nazarene scripture, for they were outlawed in Egypt. But the elder passed on many of the stories and teachings by word of mouth. And so Moses had heard stories of the lamb and the dove. Moses said, I am thirsty. The old man said, come inside my home. Your thirst will be quenched. Moses entered the yurt. Inside he saw a woman's garment folded on the table. He asked, do you have a wife? The old man answered, my Wife ascended to El Cush. I live with my seven daughters. They have taken our sheep down the mountain to graze. They will return before nightfall. Behold, because the old man used the Nazarene word El Cush and became the home. Because the old man used the Nazarene word El Cush <coughs> and because the home was decorated with symbols of the Nazarene religion, Moses became excited, thinking, this man is a free Nazarene. Moses said, my name is Moses. What's your name? And lo, are you a Nazarene? The old man replied, my birth name is Jethro. Now I am called Ruiel. And yes, I am a Nazarene. Indeed, the old man was Nazarene, for behold, Ruiel wore the pendant of Yair. I'm saying that right, Yair. 
but Yair is how I'm saying it. Moses was moved to tears of joy. And that's the high, most high priest, the Yair of the Nazarene priesthood, the Yair. There's always a Yair, every generation. Moses was moved to tears of joy. He said, how many free Nazarenes are there? Julio replied, few survive in freedom. The Egyptians crushed the Nazarene nation generations ago. Free Nazarenes in captivity truly know their religion, for their scriptures were burned long ago. The few Nazarenes are mostly, the few free Nazarenes are mostly escaped slaves. More Nazarenes that escaped Egypt abandoned the Essene way and assimilated into the general population. But behold, by then they knew little of the way, and there were no teachers of congregations to assist them. My father and mother were slaves in Egypt. They escaped and returned to Cush. They found no Nazarene congregation, for no none existed. But the lamb and the dove appeared to them and led them to a surviving remnant of the Zoro and Eskau. I was born amongst that remnant and trained by them. They are the keepers of the sacred flame. In dark times, it was the Zoro and Easter that preserved the Ark of the Covenant and our sacred scriptures. Therefore, they are also called the guardians of the scrolls. There are the cherubim wearing human flesh, being the link between this world and El Kush. Yea, one does not seek out the Zoro and Easter. They seek whom they choose. Behold, they know one. They know the thoughts and deeds of each. Yet they know even the longings of our heart. Behold, Moses, the Zoranista knows the longings of your heart, and you have been chosen for a certain work, and I have been chosen to train you for that work, and my seven daughters will assist me. For though you have been chosen to lead a reemergence of the Nazarene religion, for the time has come, yea, the Zero and Easter are also called the Watchers of Time. For behold, there are seasons and cycles for all things. And what is right in one season may be wrong in another. Yea, what is helpful and beneficial in one age may be hurtful and harmful in another. And within each cycle of time are cycles. And with Zero, zero uh, Nistar is always watching, always helping in the right way, through unseen, though unseen and unnoticed. No one age ends, and now one age ends and another begins. And you have been chosen to boldly proclaim the Essene way and inaugurate a reemergence of the Nazarene religion, for the time has come. Moses protested, I have killed a man. Accident or not, I have blood on my hands. And there are things about me that are very far from pure. Oh, I have never married. And I've had many women. Yeah, I'm guilty of fornication many times over. And one of the women was married. <laughs> Dang, where well, I am guilty of adultery. If the Zero Nistar knows my deeds, they cannot choose me, for I am a great sinner. I am not worthy. Julio replied, Know this, Moses. When you bravely intervened to prevent the rape of the Nazarene woman, you were a Nazarene lion. In your heart, you never desired to kill. And the Zero Nistar finds not guilt, but yet, but great bravery in your deeds. I'm gonna get a drink, guys. Give me a second. This is good. This part coming up. I'm trying to hear it. Because this is like making a big deal about the fact that even though he was a Nazarene lion um, and he had killed someone, it's been repeated a few times in the first part of this two chapters, three chapters, that by his father, even by Pharaoh, that he wasn't guilty, that even though the guy died, even though he killed someone, and then he just gave this long laundry list of why he wasn't worthy to lead um, 
and it didn't say to to be the leader to lead a reemergence of the Nazarene religion. So he was like, so listen. We never desire to kill. Zero Nister finds not guilt, but great bravery in your deed. And lo, the office of Yeir. <clears throat> At this time and place is not to be filled by the greatest saint, but the greatest soldier. For what is this place? It is a contested world, mostly in the hands of Luciferian soldiers. And what time is it? It is a time of warfare between the Nazarene insurgency and the Luciferian army. These things are more true than you can know and manifest in more ways than you can imagine. We are at war and you are a soldier. On this world at this time, the Yair must be a warrior. Yea, you will be attacked in ways you cannot now fathom. The Yeager must be a fierce lion. Wherefore, you have been chosen. There are other roles for them that are saintly yet timid. Yea, there are roles for all who wish to serve. But know this, we are at war and you are a soldier. Your gifts fit the role you have been chosen to fulfill. You have the ability to speak boldly and eloquently. Now, anybody else has read the other uh, King James Version, it talks about Moses says to the bush, like he had a stutter or something, remember? And um, Aaron had to speak for him. <clears throat> um, God told him, have Aaron speak for you. So this is, this is a contradiction right here, saying that Moses had the ability to speak boldly and eloquently but he would have because um he was raised in egypt all right i'm sorry let me go back on here you have the ability to speak boldly and eloquently you have the ability to discern spirits you have the ability to perceive the gifts of others you have the ability to inspire others you have the ability to understand the teachings and articulate them you are a soldier teacher and inspirer of others you are a leader and though you speak speak truth when you say that you are not pure the truth is that none in this world are very pure even those who come into this world pure and from above as you did are rendered relatively unconscious by the dense atmosphere of this world yea the atmosphere of this world is so dense as to drag down the best of us wherefore coming to this world from above is an act of great sacrifice Wherefore, coming to this world from above is an act of great sacrifice. And those from above who watch are not awed when you stumble in this dense world. Rather, they are awed when you remember why you came. And they are further awed when you begin to act out on that remembrance. <laughs> so all the things of the Zoronistar are according to times and seasons, even the selection of certain persons for certain roles. And whereas the world knows not where you came from nor why you came and knows not the longings of your heart nor your remembrances, we know those things and are all. <clears throat> Moses looked into the eyes of Uriel and wept. His tears were of joy, but also relief. He felt relieved to know that his help was accepted to the Lord and Lady, despite his impurities. As he was, as he gazed into the eyes of Uriel, deep memories stirred within him, memories of a higher world, a heaven where he once lived, and a pledge he made to enter this world as a hand of mercy of the Lord Christ and the Lady Christ. Then Uriel embraced him and spoke these words, Welcome home. Uriel took Moses on a tour of the holy mount. He told Moses, be in silence and let the mount speak to you. They walked for several hours, neither saying a word, listening to the voice of the mount. Then they returned to the yurt, and Uriel said, this large yurt is where I sleep. 
and seven daughters sleep in the seven small yurts that surround the large yurt. Yea, each daughter has a yurt of her own, and the large yurt is our dining area and an area for worship, my sleeping room and my sleeping room. The area for worship is called the sanctuary. You will sleep there. Now descend the mountain and follow the trail to where my daughters are grazing our sheep. For behold, a certain bully has of late been preventing them access to the lake where the sheep drink. Yea, he makes them wait until near dark, fording the water all day for his sheep. Moses descended down the mountain and followed the trail of the sheep. Sure enough, he found the seven daughters waiting for access to the lake. For behold, there was but one piece where the sheep could safely access the water, and the bully and his sheep were there. Moses greeted the seven daughters, telling them how he spent the day with their father, Uriel. He then said to the bullies, The sheep have had long access to the water. Now let our sheep have a turn. The bully, who was an extremely large man, looked Moses over and said, For such a little man, you have a big mouth. I know you're not, but I know these maidens. I know you not, but I know these maidens, and I have told them what price they must pay to access this water. <clears throat> then the man snickered and said, If one of them will go to bed with me, all of them may access the water. That's my price. Moses said, if you wish to avoid battle with me, you must do three things. One, you must now take your sheep and leave. Two, you must from this day on permit fair access to the water. And three, you must refrain from speaking to these women in the future, unless you have something polite to say. Or behold, if you again harass these women or deny fair access to the water, I will do battle with you. The man laughed and took a drink. <laughs> I could hear that from a flask of wine. Then he charged Moses, swinging his staff at Moses' head. Moses swiftly stepped to the side and ducked, avoiding the blow. Again and again, the man tried to strike Moses. <clears throat> again and again, he failed. For Moses moved swift, swiftly like a cat, avoiding the blows with little effort. Finally, the man was exhausted and could swing his staff no more. <clears throat> then he put his head down like a bull and charged Moses as if to tackle him. Moses simply stepped aside and the man fell face in the dirt. Then he got up and let his sheep away. Never again did he harass the seven daughters. Moses had won the battle without having to throw a single punch. The seven daughters of Uriel thanked Moses for his help and watered their twelve sheep. Then they led Moses up the path of the holy mount to the large yurt where they met. Reuel. The daughters told Reuel of Moses' intervention on their behalf and now and how he had defeated the bigger man without throwing a single punch. Reuel replied, Moses will teach you. Moses will teach each of you saying, and each of you have something to teach Moses. But now we dine. <coughs> Chapter five, the seven sisters of peace. The next morning, after morning service, Moses was sent to the yurt of the first daughter. Her name was Yeshuda. Well, that's pretty. Yeshuda. Moses trained her in Zayin. And uh, her name means foundation or base of an altar. It's the feminine form of Yasad. Okay, so this is a this is a clue right here. Foundation or base. And um because this is there's seven daughters and this is the seven chakras that it's gonna tell you about. So her first name, Yeshuda, meant foundation or base. And she trained Moses in Shalom Ein Estin, which is peace with the body. Yeah, she taught him all the things a Nazarene does to have peace with the body. The second morning, Moses went to the youth of the second daughter, Reuel. Ray, Her name was Nefesh. Uh, Moses trained her in Zayin, and she trained Moses in Shalom, uh, Nefesh, which is peace with the mind. 
May she taught him all the things Nazarene do to have peace with the mind. And the third morning, Moses was sent to the year of the third daughter of Ruriel. Her name was Sh Shalisha. Uh, Moses trained her in Zayin, and she trained Moses in Shalom, or uh, Ein Mishpach, which is peace with the family. And she taught him all the things a Nazarene does to have peace with the family. The fourth morning, Moses was sent to the yurt of the fourth daughter of Ruriel. Her name was um, um, uh, Moses trained her in Zayin, and she trained Moses in Shalom. Uh, and she trained Moses in Shalom, Am, uh, uh, um, um, which is peace with humanity. Um, Yea, she taught him all the things that Nazarene does to have peace with humanity. The fifth morning, Moses was sent to the yurt of the fifth daughter of Reuel. Her name was Nashala. Moses trained her in Zayin, and she trained Moses in Shalom Am Nashala, which is peace with heritage. Yeah, she taught him all the things in Nazarene just to have peace with heritage. The sixth morning, Moses was sent to the year of the sixth daughter of Maria. Her name was Em. Moses trained her in Zayin, and she trained Moses in Shalom Am Am Eretz which is peace with Mother Earth. Yea, she taught him all the things a Nazarene does to have peace with Mother Earth. This is a long one. I'm not going to read it, but you guys could pause the video. It's going to break it down. Nefesh means breath. Food in the mind. See, this video is already about 20 minutes long, so if I read this, just go seventh morning. Oh, it's almost over. I'm going to put it all on wax. So, and I'll put this in the description box. Um, Cause it's, it's all their names, all the sisters names and what it means. The seventh morning, Moses was sent to the yurt of the seventh daughter of Ruel. Her name was Ruah. Moses trained her in Zayin, and she trained Moses in Shalom. Uh, I'm Yahweh, which is peace with God, and God is imminent and transcendent. Yea, she taught him all the things the Nazarene does to have peace with Yahweh. The YHWH. It, it explains it in another one of these books that it's for, it's the foundation of creation. Uh, the YHWH stands for uh, Jade and Jana. Well, for Ja and Jala. Or, yeah, so it's those four. But but I said the first two, I said the first two wrong. The first two are the children of Ja and Jala. And then, and then Ja and Jala both had a child of their own. Because Ja and Jala are the masculine and the feminine of Yah. They're the, yeah, they're the polarities of Yah. And then he, those two polarities emanated um, children of themselves, a child, each one. Um, Jana, the female, she emanated Jala, and Ja emanated Jade. Four of them together make the Y H W H. So it's really not like a name. It's almost like a, 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 a which I don't know what it would put. Uh, you know, we have to go to the Hebrew and look at the characters and things like that. Okay. And each evening at uh, and each evening at evening service. Moses, along with the seven sisters of peace, received teachings from Ruiel in the sanctuary of the large year. 
And after the first week, Uriel asked Moses, do you wish to stay and study with us? Moses replied, this is the calling of my heart. <clears throat> Moses studied with Uriel and his seven daughters for seven years. After seven years, the seven daughters approached Moses and said, we seven are unmarried virgins. It is our will that you select one of us to marry, for we wish that our father's bloodline be continued. You are the only Nazarene man of our age on this mount. This is our only will, only if it is of your will. Moses replied, I will spend the night in prayer and meet you in the morning with my answer. The next morning, Moses met with the seven sisters of peace and said, I cannot choose one from amongst the seven. For behold, I love each of you dearly and equally. Lo, I desire not to hurt the feelings of six by choosing one. Wherefore, I have a request. I ask that you, I ask that the seven of you together make this decision. Yea, whomever you decide, I shall marry, I will marry. The seven agreed, saying, We will spend the night in prayer and meet you in the morning. Yea, in the rising of the sun, we, um, yea, with the rising of the sun, we will give you our decision. The next morning, the seven sisters of peace met with Moses, the seven daughters. The seventh daughter, Ruah, spoke, saying, We have made our decision. But before we tell you it, know this, you are free to reject our decision. For behold, the decision of our hearts may not be the desire of your hearts. Our decision is that we choose that you unite with all of us. Six will continue to teach you the sevenfold peace. And the seventh will do that, but also will be your wife. For behold, we sisters have lived together all for all of our lives and do not wish to be parted from one another. Therefore, it is our decision that we all share the same land, but only Shalisha will be your wife and share your bed. Lo, on the first day of the, each week, Yeshua will teach us peace with the body as, as before, but on this and every day, only Shalisha will share your bed and be your wife. On the second day of the week, Nefesh will teach us peace with the mind and, and as before, but on this and every day, only Shalisha will share your bed and be your wife. On the third day of each day, Umna will teach us peace with humanity, even as before, but on this day and every day, only Shalisha will share your bed and be your wife. On the fifth day of each week, Naklashla will teach us peace with heritage, even as before, but on this and every day, only Shalisha will share your bed and be your wife. On the sixth day of each week, M will teach us peace with Mother Earth, even as before, but on this and every day, only Shalisha will share your bed and be your wife. On the seventh day of each week, I, Rua, will teach peace with, uh, with God, and God is imminent and transcendent. See, that's that four. Imminent and transcendent. The imminent or the, or the emanations of Jah and Jalah. And the transcendents are there, the ones. So these two are outside of the mother ovum. Most I haven't, and these two are, uh, and, I, and I might have to look the, de the, ne the definition of the words. And these two are inside the mother ovum with us. But together, those four uh, make up um, Yahweh. Sorry, I don't mean to keep it's almost over. And then I'm going to put the other part where he goes to Egypt on another um, video. So that way anybody can decide if they want to skip this part. But on this and every day, only Shalisha will share your bed and be your wife. So Moses replied with glad heart, I will honor your choice, but only with the blessings of Reuel. Ruah replied, yes, of course, but we know our father and trust him to honor our choice. And so the seven daughters and Moses approached Reuel. Yea, they told him of their decision of the seven daughters and Moses and Moses' acceptance. Then they asked for the blessing of Reuel. And Reuel gave his blessing, saying, this will be a wonderful marriage. And behold, it is an extraordinary blessing that my daughters will share the same land and lease until the other six fine husbands. 
you don't want no poly, whatever. Um, a small wedding was soon held. A few Nazarene friends attended. Behold, these friends were of the Zero Me Star. The wedding was officiated by Ruriel and a Nazarene elder named Miriam. Lo, Miriam of the Zoro Nistar was a prophetess. Then Ruriel spoke to Moses, saying, Your studies with me are complete. Behold, I have taught you all that I know. Now your ministry to the world will begin. For lo, the Lord and Lady sent you here for a reason, and that reason was that you be trained for a great work. Go to the spot in the ancient orchard where once stood the tree of life. That is the very pinnacle of this mountain of peace. Fast and pray. Ask O Elohim to reveal how best you may serve Jaja. Moses replied, I will commune with my wife for 49 days, and I will climb the peak of the mountain and fast for 40 days. In prayer, I will seek guidance for my work. Miriam is a popular name used by many Nazarenes. This Miriam is not the same person as Miriam the Magdalene. Um, I'm going to stop it here. This went 30 minutes already. I want to refresh myself so I don't start dragging my words out. Um, thanks for watching. Sorry if I interrupted the story on you. Stay tuned, and part three is coming up. Book of Moses, chapter six, 40 day fast and commission of Moses. It's the part, this is where he meets the burning bush. It's coming up next. See you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.